Hello, my name is Sam Brown, and today I will be talking about ferroelectric capacitors, structure, process, application, challenges. In the background, you will see some video by the Hacksmith, which I will link his YouTube channel below, and he will be discharging a capacitor. This isn't a ferroelectric capacitor, but it's just a regular capacitor, and you will see just how quickly it can discharge a large amount of voltage in a small amount of time. Ferroelectricity was discovered in the 1920s. It was just regarded as an academic curiosity and had no practical applications tied to it. However, since then we have technologically advanced and we have made a ferroelectric capacitors which are used in everyday life and many things uh, in your computers and medical devices or maybe at the grocery store whenever you scan your uh, groceries. Traditional capacitors consist of two metal strips inside of a casing separated by an insulator, in which they call a dielectric. This allows the store of charge without the interaction of the charge between the metal strips to discharge it. However, the difference between a capacitor and a ferroelectric capacitor is that the dielectric used in a ferroelectric capacitor is made from a ferroelectric material, which, regardless to sound, very few of them have iron in them. This next video is by How To Mechatronics, and they are showing how a capacitor charges. Now, the material between, as we discussed earlier, is a ferroelectric material. This allows to make a larger electric field between the plates. Now, as you charge a capacitor, electrons and protons separate, which cause a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate, and which causes the charge in the capacitor to hold. And whenever you discharge a capacitor, they combine out into what we know as electricity. Now, ferroelectricity is held due to the polar crystal. Now, this polar crystal causes spontaneous electric polarization in the material itself, which is caused by its baseline structure. Now, in this spontaneous electric polarization, it is how the electric capacitor charge is held. The charge is held due to the reversal of the dipoles in the ferroelectric material. This is how it remembers the direction of the electric field and holds its charge. This next video is by PowerSir Animated Videos, and it, we're going to be discussing RAM. Now, the ferroelectric capacitor has many applications, including radios, medical devices, and what we call RAM. Um, now, some RAM, which it stands for Random Access Memory, is made from ferroelectric capacitors. Now this was devised by a MIT grad student in the 1940s, and it was not developed into the 1980s, and it was developed by several major electronic companies, including Samsung. Now RAM is the temporary memory in devices. Think about short-term and long-term memory. The RAM is the short-term, and you must go through that before it is devised into the long-term. This RAM is made up of about thousands and millions of capacitor and transistor combos which make a memory cell. Now whenever you charge a capacitor, it represents a 1 in binary code, an uncharged one represents a 0. Thousands of these 1s and zeros represent the data that you are looking at. Now the fair electric capacitor isn't used in all RAM, but it is used mainly in computers and game devices. Now the fair electric capacitor RAM is cheaper than other RAM types, and with the right construction is just as reliable and takes less time to write. However, its power is greater than some alternatives, and that is why it is not used in the mobile devices.